and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is nested if statements using Win Automation. Let's go. All right, so I recently ran into this situation and I figured that uh, I would share my solution with you so that you can benefit from it as well. So naturally inside of Win Automation, there may be situations where you want to check for multiple conditions before executing the step. Meaning if X equals one and y equals 2 and z equals 3, then let's go ahead and perform a series of actions. Now, naturally you can do like if x equals 1 and then another if statement if y equals 2, but that doesn't look very good and it overall like complicates everything. So what we can do is actually have inline expressions that help us do this. And it may not be overly intuitive when you look at the user interface that you can do this, but that's really why I wanted to show you this as part of this episode. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure Serverless resources. Now, this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal, and it helps organizations in supporting Azure Serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless360 at serverless360.com. Okay, so inside of Win Automation, naturally we have an if action itself. And so typically this is where you'd have your first operand where you might just say if value one is equal to one and then you would have your operator and then your second operand. But what we can do is we can essentially concatenate a series of expressions and evaluations in then what we're depending upon is them all to be true in order for this comparison to be made. So let's just take a practical example. So if value one, which would be like a parameter or a variable, is equal to the word one, and if value two is equal to the word two, and if value three is equal to the word three, if all of those evaluate to true, then essentially what we're doing is we're comparing our first operand, which will be true, equal to true. And naturally, if that is the case, this will respond with a value of true. If value one is equal to like zebra, then this whole first operand will evaluate to false. And then as a result, we'll compare false to true and naturally it won't be true. So false will be returned. So this is essentially how we can go about building this out. Now, the one thing you do want to pay attention to is that the percent sign is even though value one is a variable and we're used to seeing value one or variables being wrapped inside of a percentage sign, we only have one set that represents the whole expression, right? So we have a beginning percent sign and an end percent sign. So that is something to be very aware of. Now, what I've also got, and this is part of our demo, we'll see this in action, is essentially two examples of this. And this will also give you a sense of some of the dynamic casting that does take place inside of Win Automation. So here I have variables one, two, and three. Value one, value two, value three. These are assigned strings of one, two, and three. So right now, the type of value one is, is technically a string. And so we're gonna go ahead and do this string comparison and check for this, and if this is true, we'll display a message. If it's not true, we'll display a different message. Now, here's what gets a little bit interesting about Win Automation for those that are new to it, is that when we go ahead and set the variable equal to one, this will now be casted as a number, a numeric. And then what we'll do is we can go ahead and do a similar comparison, except it's against numerics as opposed to strings, and then we'll see the, the messages being displayed. So let's go ahead, let's take a closer look at a demo. Okay, so same code that we just went through in the slides. So maybe what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and let's run this and see exactly what happened. So here you can see that it was successful in comparing this inline expression to our variables that are set. So checking to see 
for the values of one, two, and three respectively, and we can see them being displayed here. So we know that that is working. And then same thing, what we've done is we've switched it up, and here we are treating them as numerics. Notice that we're not gonna go ahead and have sort of strings applied, quotations around our values um, in our second expression. And so here this just allows us to demonstrate how the sort of dynamic casting of variables work, but also how when you reuse a variable, uh, its type can actually change, which is kind of interesting. So that is the, the happy path. Now let's just make sure that uh, we are uh, keeping things uh, honest here, and what we're going to do is just uh, make this thing go down the negative path. So we're going to set value 1 to apple, and let's just set a value 1 here in sort of our numeric case to 20. And let's just save, and we'll see what happens now. Right, so we can see that we've now gone through the negative path, and we've got our else branch being executed, apple two and three. And then same thing on the numeric side. So here we've got 20 being listed, and we can see that this is working. So this is much cleaner than having a lot of like nested if statements, where you'd have if and then if and then if, right? And then trying to deal with all the else conditions, like that's a total pain. So just wanted to share this with you, uh, something that I ran into this past week, and figured that you folks might benefit from it as well. All right, so thanks for checking out this video. If you are not following me on Twitter, I would encourage you to do so. Likewise, uh, obviously you're on YouTube, so I appreciate you checking out this video. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and likes are always appreciated. So thanks for checking out this video, and we'll catch you later on the channel. Take care.